So, Alex, um, let's start with AB 290, because I, I got to say um, this. Uh, I'm I'm glad this piece of legislation, frankly, um, well, I'm glad it exists. I don't want to say that I'm glad it's in jeopardy, but I'm glad it exists because um, your piece uh, in the American Prospect on the dialysis duopoly is fascinating. I didn't know any of this stuff. Um, let's start with 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 AB 290, but maybe even before we do that, give us a sense of how many people in this country um, are on dialysis. And I I am I assume that many people know what it is, but it basically deals with kidney failure. Yeah, that's correct. It's um. Yeah, it's, it's a medical treatment that uh, that people undergo, and their kidneys are unable to to filter uh, blood appropriately or effectively. And um, there's something like 500,000 people in the United States who uh, undergo some form of dialysis treatment every year. And we should say that what that involves is um, once a week, maybe maybe twice a week, uh, going to a dialysis clinic of some sort, and it takes a couple hours at least, I think. And you basically wash your blood. Yeah, that's correct. It's uh, it's time and labor intensive. It's it's very expensive and it's um it's very exhausting for the people who go through it too. So it's um oftentimes people who are going through these treatments multiple times a week. It um you know they they can't maintain the sort of steady job or you know the kind of uh, exhaustive uh, labor that you know other people do. So it's it's a serious procedure. And uh, and it's one that's ongoing. My understanding is that uh, once you are um, uh, basically are in need of dialysis because you've had uh, some type of kidney failure, uh, sometimes people lose a kidney to um, you only need one. But uh, if that one fails, uh, then you need to go to dialysis. Uh, you're right. There are two companies that dominate the American outpatient kidney dialysis market. Tell us about those two companies. Yeah, so there's two big players. One is uh, called DeVita, which is a company based out of Denver. The other one is called Fresenius, and that's a German-owned company. And between the two of them, they control some 70% of the uh, dialysis, uh, outpatient dialysis market. So they're, uh, they're the two kind of heavy hitters, and they've, they've cornered this market in a pretty astonishing way. How long have they been in operation? I mean, how long has this dynamic been in place with just two major players? You know, I'm not sure exactly. Um, it's it's like so many things. It's something that has gotten more acute uh, over recent years. Uh, I don't know the exact numbers uh, off the top of my head, but it's something that um, kind of has emerged in uh, in recent years. I think that they've they've gotten more entrenched in this position, and and so now, yeah, you got these two companies that pretty much rule the roost, and uh, there are some other smaller players, but. Um, yeah, they're they're definitely the two top dogs. Give us a sense of how much money they make annually on, you know, I guess if it's 75 percent, I'm trying to do the math, uh, 500,000 people, um, you know, they're servicing, I don't know, 350, 400,000 of of people uh, annually. Um, how much money are they making from these dial? Like what what are their uh, what are their revenues? Yeah, the, the, so the two companies combined uh, take in about four billion dollars in, in annual profits. So it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty healthy business for them. They they make a pretty good chunk of change. That wait, is that profits or just revenue? That's profits. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So um, they do quite well for themselves, um, and so now they have spent two and a half million dollars. Uh, you write into a lobbying operation to oppose a single bill in the California State House. What is that bill? Yeah, sure. So the bill is AB 290. Um, it, it's currently sitting in the in this, in this California State Senate. And it's a bill that would effectively cap some of their um, their their billing processes. It, it, it it would basically cap the the rate at which um, kidney dialysis is is billed to um, and peg it to the rate at which Medicare is billed. So right now the the bulk of of uh, kidney dialysis recipients are on Medicare, and Medicare because of that broad user base um, can negotiate uh, a lower rate, and so they 
these two companies make a, a, a very limited amount or, you know, some of them uh, sometimes they claim to lose money off of a, a Medicare patient. But if a patient comes in on private insurance, they can actually bill at something like four times as much for the same procedure, for the, for the same treatment. So um, the bulk of their money is coming from, in fact, you know, uh, more than one estimation that, that they put forward in um, at the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference in 2018 said that something like 110 percent of their profits are coming from uh, people with private insurance um, who come through for treatment and they get that treatment billed at a rate that's four times what Medicare bills at. And this bill, kind of in short, would would cap some of their um, some of that more egregious sort of uh, billing processes and, and um, peg it to the Medicare rate. Okay, so let's back up a little bit here. And it, what does that mean? One hundred and ten percent. One hundred and ten percent of what? What is that? <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent of one hundred and ten percent of their profits, according to this this uh, presentation that they they put forward. They they claim that um, ninety percent of uh, I think ninety percent of their patients are coming through on Medicare, and on those. Uh, they are losing money, but on the ten percent that come through on uh, on um, private insurance, they're making one hundred and fifteen percent of their profits. So they're both overcoming those losses and racking up that you know that combined four billion dollars a year that that they that they take home. In wow! Profits. Wow! Okay. And now the question as to whether they are losing money on Medicare is in dispute. Supposedly, uh, you report that um, the president of at least one of those companies said, yeah, we make money on Medicare patients. But before we get there, that, that, that all these patients are on Medicare or could be, how did that happen? Are all these people over the age of 65? It's an interesting arrangement, yeah. So, so the kidney is, is the single part of the, of the body that is, that is covered by single payer in this country. And it's a, it's a very particular arrangement, but because kidney dialysis is, is so expensive. It's um, you know, both time and, and money intensive. Um, the federal government passed a provision in 1972 that said that every person in this country who goes through kidney dialysis will be covered under Medicare. So it's kind of the, it's, it's, it's the seed of a, of a single payer system here. It just is only for uh, one body part, and that is applied no matter what your age is or, or what your income is or, or any of that. That's fascinating. What is the, I mean, I, I imagine, I don't know if you had time to go back and look at like the legislative history, but why, 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 why how did it get to be just dialysis as opposed to, I don't know, um, heart arrhythmia or something? Yeah, I, I think it's just a byproduct of how expensive that, that, that procedure is or how that, how expensive that treatment is. And I think, you know, if um, in the days before the Affordable Care Act, you know, those 500,000 people would have been ineligible for private insurance because that's a massive pre-existing condition, right? And so, so it became one of those things where, you know, for almost everyone, uh, that would be cost prohibitive and they would be unable to pay for it themselves. And rather than having a, a massive, you know, public health crisis where people with uh, kidney failure were unable to, to, uh, to acquire the care they need, I think the, the federal government basically provisioned for this um, just out of sheer necessity if based on cost alone. That's fascinating. And we should say, obviously, that was during um, a, a Republican presidency, a different uh, era, perhaps. Um, all right. Well, let's take a break here. Uh, so where we're at at this point is um, you have told us that the dialysis industry in this country is dominated by two players. They own 70 percent, essentially, of the uh, the business in this country that um that Medicare has been covering dialysis patients regardless of age for 50 years. But, and here's the twist, there is um, a mechanism in which to drive people to private insurance. That this legislation being considered now in California, AB 290, would essentially blow up. When we come back, folks are not going to believe how people are being driven into private insurance by these two companies, which basically own the dialysis business in this country. I'm Sam Cedar. We'll be right back. Ring of Fire Radio.